Hey everybody and welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. Today I think I'm probably going to help my game more than I help your game, but this is exciting and I know some of you have been waiting on it. I asked you in a previous video, I think it was a couple of videos ago, to make your guesses and place your bets on what iron set I was going to go with. Now to recap, it was going to be a used set of clubs because I felt like the used market was where the real value was at. They were going to be not too old. The other hint I gave you was that it was going to be $500 or less. And another hint, I think the final hint I gave you, I might have given you another two more, but I know that one of them was that I was going to go from a game improvement iron, like a true game improvement iron, down to what I consider to be a, a player's sort of distance iron. Something that was not going to be a blade, but I did want to take one step down from the game improvement category just because I felt like I needed more consistency, number one. And number two, I needed that sort of forged one piece uh, club to, to be able to manipulate the lie and the loft angles to really dial in my gapping throughout the bag. And uh, in this box, well, you know, this box is empty now. It was a little bit of a dupe in the beginning. That box, that box had my clubs in it. I've already taken the clubs to the club fitter and had new grips put on the clubs. They are good to go. You know what? Let me just, let me show you what I got. All right. The first thing I'm going to show you is the grip. Now I had all of my grips changed over to this for about a year on my driver. I had the golf pride jumbo wrap put onto that driver and I was testing it. I was doing kind of a long-term test to see how that one club would react. And then I had another driver that I was using for a while that had a standard size grip on it. I'll get into that in another video. I'm probably going to make a separate video on the grips, why I chose what I did. These are the Golf Pride CP2 Wrap Jumbo with double tape. The club fitter that I went to, they have been in business for 50 years and they have a ton of grips that they offer. And currently this one, and for a while, has been their number one choice in grip. Let me tell you about the club itself. The Wilson Staff CB Forged. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but right here, it's pretty faint. It says forged, let me get it in the right light. Forged right there. I thought that was pretty cool. It's almost like a little watermark. But look at the back of this club. This is, this is like beautiful. Now these are used clubs. I think these came out in 2021. I haven't been able to hit these clubs that much yet. I have played around with them a little bit. I had to have them cut an inch off of the shaft and then I had them re-gripped as well. These are uh, True Temper, I think they're S S300 stiff shafts, uh, which is one of the most common shafts out there. It doesn't have the markings on it. You can buy these brand new still. And I saw them for, I think, anywhere between $1,000 to $1,100 online, brand new for five through pitch and wedge. Well, I got four through gap wedge. Now, I don't know if I'll ever use a four iron, but I've got it to match the set. And then I've also got the gap wedge on the bottom side, which was hugely important because my other two wedges in the bag is a 54 and a 60. And I needed something between pitch and wedge and 54. That's the gap wedge. So I actually got an eight club set used. I was finding these between $650 all the way up to $880. Anywhere in between to find this set of clubs, and I got a whale of a deal on these. Let me hit a couple of little shots. I haven't even warmed up yet. I've got a nine iron. The reason I chose these clubs was after a, a long period of research. I just have to warm up a little bit. After a long period of research, I read, I watched videos, I spoke with people, uh, I went out to the shops, uh, I did a lot of research online. I checked out so many things. It, it, it literally spanned weeks, if not months, of studying and trying to amass the, uh, the knowledge that I needed to make a good, informed decision. Let's try again here. Um, and every review that I watched on these clubs talked about how awesome they were. And I know what you think. A lot of those, those reviews on YouTube, they're, they're bought and paid for. Listen. Everybody had rave reviews about this. Michael Newton Golf, Average Golfer, Rick Shields, uh, smaller channels that you may not have ever heard of, reading the, through the forums online, uh, normal golfers having open conversations. Everybody talked about how great these were and how great they felt. And it's 
It's true. It is, it is all true. They feel amazing. You get lots of feedback. You know where you hit the golf ball with the face of this club almost every single time. Now, the fact that it has the cavity back and a little bit of tungsten weighting in some of the mid and longer irons to help you get the ball airborne. Uh, and then there's like the stability brace across the back. All of that stuff adds up to help give you some forgiveness. So it is more of a player's iron. But at the same time, it's not nearly as harsh and as discerning as a true blade or a muscle back. So you do get some of the elements of forgiveness. Now, the other thing too is I expected to lose a little bit of distance with these. Since they're so new and I haven't really got a chance to work out with them very much and track everything, I did actually get onto GC Quad at the fitters and I've got some information coming up. I got, I've got a wealth of information coming up for you on driver and a comparison between the Garmin R10 and the GC Quad. I've got that coming up when I do my driver reveal. The driver's gonna be here, I think maybe next week. I'll try and film. The information I was getting is that I am going to lose some distance. Now, how much distance am I gonna give up? My old set of irons, the Tommy Armor 845s, the seven iron, I believe, was either 29 and a half or 30 degrees. Now, a lot of people call that loft jacking. That's a whole nother discussion for a video. I can tell you why loft jacking is not necessarily what you think it is, but Anyway, with the seven iron being 30 degrees in that set and the seven iron in this set being 34 degrees, uh, and this is not a hollow body construction iron, I know that I'm gonna give up some distance. How much? I don't know yet because I haven't had enough time. Anytime you get a new set of irons, you gotta give them some time to, uh, to get used to them before you can make any kind of judgments. So I think if I lose about five yards, six yards, something like that with uh, my lower irons, and then I might lose maybe 10 or 12 on some of the mid to long irons, I'm completely fine with that as long as I get that consistency and, and sort of that, that same grouping that I want. I'm, I'm fine with giving up that distance. Really good feeling irons. The ball flights on these also, seeing as how uh, the mid and the long irons in my other set, the trajectories were coming out lower and they were running a lot more. And you think, well, that's good. It can be. If you're playing in the wind, you want it to go low. You want it to run more. But if you're playing in really wet conditions and there's not much wind, you want it to carry more, launch higher in the air and most golfers have trouble getting the ball into the air to start with. So the fact that these launch higher, my six iron launches much higher with this set than it did with my previous set. So it's gonna take a little time to get used to these, but I can already tell you, I think me and these clubs are gonna get along really well. They feel fantastic. So they're not gonna be as forgiving as the clubs that I had. That's really where irons have come such a long way in recent years is, yes, they are a little bit longer, but the main things that they're doing is they're more forgiving. That means that anywhere you hit it on the face, you're probably gonna get a better result. Like if I miss a half inch out of the sweet spot on this club versus my old clubs, I'm probably gonna get a lot more forgiveness with my old set than I would with this. And in a lot of ways, that can be a really good teacher and a really good training aid, but again, I've got to get used to these clubs. It's going to take me some time, but uh, I really feel like I've made a really good choice so far. Typical sets, five through pitching wedge. You can add the gap wedge, you can add the four iron, but I've got four through gap wedge. So that is an expanded set. If you go buy this set brand new, $1,000 to $1,100 and you're probably gonna have six, maybe seven clubs in for that price. That's brand new, used. Most of these were between $650 and $880, the ones that I found. And again, you're talking about six or seven club sets in varying degrees of condition. I got this set with shipping included for $450. I believe Podrick Harrington is currently gaming this very iron. Now, I'm no Padraig Harrington. There's no reason for me to try and model my bag after an all-time great 
historically great, incredible, still playing extremely well, maybe playing the best of his career pro. <laughs> I've got no business trying to have the same clothes in my bag as him. I just think that it speaks to the pedigree of this club. I just want to say thanks to everybody out there who turned in all their guesses on the comments. As I said, some of you were extremely close and some of you had some great, great ideas and some suggestions. I do want to say Mizuno, absolutely fantastic clubs. I've had a set of those before. They were just a little pricey. The Tacomos and the boutique brands for a new set of clubs, they do have some that are fully forged, cavity backs, blades with the Tacomo, but they were just a little bit out of my budget. They were gonna be, I think about 650 or something like that. And then by the time I added in a gap wedge, it was gonna be even more than that. So I really would not have been paying anywhere near the amount of money that I paid for these. I would be a couple hundred dollars over that. Uh, there were some other really good suggestions in there, but Wilson, they've won a ton of majors. They've been around for a very long time. I like the underdog. I kind of like the unsung heroes. I like the people that don't get quite as much spotlight. If you haven't noticed, there is a theme to my channel. So I feel like I've made a really good choice. These are timeless irons. They feel in incredibly accurate and they feel really soft. I think I made a good purchase and had a good price. So I'm going to be very happy with the clubs in my bag and look for the video coming on the grips and the video coming once the driver gets here. See you in the next video, guys.